Hello and welcome to this demo. In this demo, we're going to see how to create a pod using a YAML definition file. Okay, so in order to uh, create YAML files, you can actually use any uh, editor uh, of your choice. You could even use just a Notepad or Notepad++ or Atom. Or there are multiple options available. In my case, I tend to use uh, PyCharm or a tool from the JetBrains uh, family. So I personally use PyCharm, which is actually a Python editor, and it has a it has good support for YAML files. So I use JetBrains um, PyCharm as my editor. If you'd like to um, use PyCharm, you can actually go to JetBrains.com and uh, select PyCharm. Uh, jetbrains.com forward slash pycharm and you can actually see uh, when you click on uh, download you can actually see there are two options one is a professional version and another is community version which is free so you can actually uh, uh, download this lightweight IDE which is free uh, uh, to develop uh, definition files and later on I will also show some tips and tricks around using this IDE which will make your life uh, developing Kubernetes definition files in YAML very easy. Uh, so there are ways that you can, there are plugins that will help you validate your file uh, available with uh, PyCharm. So we'll look at uh, those as well. Uh, so to start with, I'm going to create a new project. Um, I'm going to call it as pod and I'm just going to create uh, the, the project. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's my folder. Um, named pod and under pod I'm going to start by creating a pod definition file I'm going to name that pod that uh, dash definition dot yaml and so now I have a one file and as we saw in the lecture every Kubernetes definition file has the four root level um, properties which are API version so I'm going to specify uh, each of those so we have API version kind metadata and spec okay so as we discussed api version is going to be v1 um, for pod the kind as we know is pod so i'm going to set that as pod the metadata is a, an object or a dictionary so i'm going to hit enter and then i'm going to hit tab or you can actually use spaces as well I'm going to provide the properties under metadata, which are name, and I'm going to set a name for my uh, pod, which is going to be my app dash pod. And when I hit enter, as you see, it goes to the next line, but it's intended. It has equal number of spaces before it than the previous line. And I'm going to have labels and under labels. So since labels is a dictionary again, I'm going to uh, indent the next few lines to the right as well. Under labels, I have app, and uh, the name of the app is going to be my app. Now, if you look at this whole file, and if you look at the bottom, uh, PyCharm has support for uh, understanding uh, YAML files. So if you look at the bottom, you can actually see the various elements in a tree structure. So as you can see, document one of one indicates uh, this file, this and the entire file. And under this file, um, it, it actually shows you in tree structure the various properties. So you have API version, which is directly under the file, kind, metadata, and spec are all directly under the file or root properties of the file, which is what we wanted. And if you look at v1, v1 is actually under API version. So now, as you can see, under the document, I have API version, and under that, I have v1. So that matches uh, what we're trying to do. Similarly, if I select pod, you can see that it's under kind. And if you select name, which is under metadata, you can see that it's under metadata. Similarly, uh, when you select labels, you will also see that it is under metadata. So that means name and labels are children of metadata, and they are uh, so they are siblings, and they must uh, be intended. Uh, they must have the same intention. So under a name, you have my app pod. So you can see the, the hierarchy there. Similarly, app is under labels and my app is under app, which is under labels. Now, if you look at it, name and labels need to be on the same vertical line. Um, for now, if I simply move labels to the right, you would now see that labels is under name. So labels is now a child of name. 
uh, which is not right. Uh, it it uh, is supposed to be a sibling, so I'm going to remove those extra spaces. I'm going to hit backspace, and it's I'm I'm going to uh, level it so this is right. And under labels, you can actually have as many labels as you want. Um, so you can uh, create any uh, key value pair here. You can say cost center is um, Amer, uh, location um, North America, or um, uh, something like the type of this particular pod, uh, maybe a front end or something like that. So anything that will help you group this particular pod in the future. Um, for now, I'm just going to remove all of that. And I'll now move on to the specs section. Um, under the specs section, remember um, the specs section is unique to each uh, object that you're creating. So for a pod, uh, under the specs section, you actually have containers. And under containers, you have uh, the containers is in fact an array so, or a list. So you have a list of items. Um, so you need a, each item in the list is identified by a dash. So you, know, you have to put a dash followed by a space and then name, which is the name of my pod. Uh, sorry, the name of my container inside the pod. And that's going to be nginx control uh, container. And, and then I have image which is the uh, name of the image itself, which is nginx. So if you look at it, I have under spec, I have containers, which is a list, and then I have an item in the list, which is uh, which has name and image. Now, if you try and look at the hierarchy of what we just created, uh, say if I select name, I see that it's under spec and it's under containers, but there's something in, in between which says item once one of one. What that actually means is that's what indicates that the container is a list and it has uh, multiple items. And this is the first item of uh, just one item. So this two lines is uh, one item in the containers. Similarly, you can have, uh, we know that we discussed that you can have additional containers in a pod. So if you had additional containers, then this is how you would define it. You would, uh, in the new line, you would add a new dash uh, followed by new information about the uh, followed by information about the new pod uh, which could be like a backend container and the image is uh, could be something like redis or something um, so in this case now when it's like name uh, you can actually see that it says item two of two and then one of two so now it actually identifies the each item in the array or the list so that indicates that the, our format is correct and that is uh, what we were trying to do. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of the second container. Then I'm, I'm going to leave it as uh, uh, one container per pod. So this is good. I'm now going to copy this, the contents of this and uh, create an actual pod uh, using this, um, the content that we just created. So I'm going to go to the uh, cube master. Um, I'm going to create a folder structure for my demos. So I'm going to call it demos and under demos I'm going to create a folder called pod and under pod I'm going to create a file um, named pod definition.yaml and I will paste the contents uh, that I just created. Okay so uh, but I now, uh, I'm going to verify the contents of the file. I can now run the cube control get pods command. Uh, before I create the pod, I just want to make sure there's nothing running. So if you're following me from the previous uh, lab where I deployed a pod using the cube control run command, uh, that's the pod that's still running. So I'm going to get rid of that using the cube control delete deployment command. So that's gone. When I now run the cube control get pods command, I see that there are no resources found. I can now create a new pod using the cube control create uh, pod definition dot yaml command. And I see that a new pod, my pod, my app pod is created. When I run the cube control get pods command, I see that it's in the process of creating the container. And I will now monitor it. And when I run it again, I see that it's in a running state. Well, that's it for this lecture.
in the next demo, we're going to look at some tips and tricks around uh, working with YAML files in PyCharm. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next demo.